Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Blogcast with your hosts Will and Simon. Hey Simon, what are we talking about today? Yeah, g'day Will, mate. It's great to be with you, mate. Well, today we are going to put a bit of a deep dive into a layer two that's uh, up and merging called Mantle. So Mantle is uh, being funded by BitDAO. Do you want to tell us a bit about BitDAO before we go into to Mantle, mate? Oh, sure. So BitDAO is famous for being one of the largest DAOs formed in 2021 uh, with a really big uh, treasury uh, funded by uh, Peter Thiel, uh, famous uh, billionaire VC, Pantera Capital and Dragonfly Capital. BitDAO is famous for funding different projects, zero knowledge proof projects. Uh, they fund a lot of research as well in universities and they also fund blockchain games. And on top of that, they fund layer tools, which is super important, very needed in uh, in blockchain. Yeah, for sure, mate. So BitDAO is doing a lot of great things for the industry. So specifically, we're looking at what they're doing for Mantle. So Mantle is a layer two solution on the Ethereum network. So why is it that L L2s are important. Why, why do we need layer twos in this ecosystem? Well, so uh, let's go back to layer ones uh, or blockchains in general. Uh, blockchains need to be decentralized, fast and secure. And that's called the blockchain trilemma because it's very difficult to have all of those three properties. So whenever you hear that a, dis uh, that a blockchain is fast, it usually has to either sacrifice decentralization or security. And the reason that is, is that layer one blockchains need thousands of nodes. Ethereum has something to the tune of 3,000 to 6,000 nodes. Uh, consensus has to be reached across all of these nodes, and that is what makes them slow. And now the problem that layer ones face is that they have to make this layer of nodes uh, be able to work with each other. So they have to consider the node in South Africa, in the States, you know, running on powerful AWS computers so really the speed of layer one networks is actually limited by the weakest nodes some layer ones can uh can demand higher specs for each node but then the problem that brings is that well fine let's have an extremely powerful nodes on this layer one but then the problem is that when you do that you start to exclude other nodes that could participate. And when you do that, your network becomes less decentralized. It has fewer nodes, and it's also likely to be stored in the, in similar geographical areas. That's awesomely detailed and awesomely uh, technical there. Uh, let me try and replay back just to, to dumb it down for, for someone like me who doesn't quite entirely get the, uh, the technical aspects of it. But la layer ones like Ethereum, which is predominantly the layer one that all these layer twos are being built on, is decentralized and it's safe, but it's not fast enough. And mm -hmm. so these layer twos are bringing in options to allow you to use Ethereum as the, as the base layer but then you get the, the speed that you want using a layer two solution. And, but usually when you do a layer two solution, there is some element of sacrifice, isn't there? But uh, typically it's to do with decentralization or security. Um, but I believe Mantle itself is coming up with a unique way so that it is getting the speeds but not reducing its security. So why don't you tell us about that? Exactly. So when you create a layer two, what you do is uh, you, you definitely reduce the amount of decentralization and security. So let's just uh, make it simple. You might create a rule where you say you don't want thousands of nodes. Let's just make it 50 nodes. And that's all we're going to use for consensus. So layer two is essentially lose security. But then what they do is they rely on layer one security. So after a couple of blocks on the layer two, what they do is they send the transactions uh, every couple of blocks uh, back to the layer one, and that secures the network. So that's great in theory. But then the problem is that there are so many layer twos uh, currently being created. And what happens is that that decentralizes the security. Because when you create a layer two, you do need uh, different nodes to uh, stake on it uh, to, to increase the security. So if you create a new layer two, the initial problem you're going to have is actually convincing the stakers that are on the Ethereum network to move all of the liquidity that they have staked on Ethereum into your layer two, right? So that is one key problem that layer twos have is that they don't have enough stakers. Uh, let's have an example. Um, so let's you and I start a layer two network today. It might only have $50,000 uh, total staked 
uh, that is backing all the transactions happening in that area. If a hacker wanted to attack that network, all they would need to do is create another couple of nodes, have them join the network, and then stake a lot more than $50,000. That will cause chaos in our network, right? Now, our network would be much more secure if we had much higher stake, let's say millions of dollars staked. So how does Mantle solve this? They use new technology also funded by BitDAO called the EigenLayer Data Availability Service. Okay, so we're speaking about the EigenLayer, which is the unique element that Mantle is bringing. So what does the EigenLayer do that is unique? So in order for any blockchain, uh, layer one or layer two to work, uh, it needs uh, to do two things. One, it needs to order transactions. That means when uh, you and I send tokens to each other, the blockchain needs to be extremely clear about who sent what to who first. And on top of that, it needs consensus. So that information needs to be spread to all the nodes in order to get consensus. Now, for this to happen, you need something called data availability. And so this is what EigenLayer provides in that it, pro it creates a shared data availability space for any uh, layer two network uh, that uh, plugs in uh, the Eigen data layer. And so Mantle is the first layer two service to plug into this data availability layer. Oh, I was, I was going to say, so I guess from the, the, the layman's terms, again, we've got other layer twos. We've got Arbitrum and Optimism, which are kind of leading the way in the Ethereum network. I'm a heavy Ethereum user. I use those quite a lot. Why would I want to use Mantle over Arbitrum or Optimism? So Mantle will probably be a little bit faster. By plugging into this data availability layer, the properties for the different nodes set on this layer are obviously very high, much higher than those on the base layer of Ethereum. So the first thing that you get is speed. But then the, the second very interesting property you get is that the Eigen layer has a very clever way of bringing in all of this staked liquidity that is in the Ethereum layer back up into any layer two that plugs into the Eigen layer. And how that works is, let's say you might be using a staking service like Coinbase. So you deposit your ETH and Coinbase stakes that into Ethereum to guarantee security. You're there getting rewarded for contributing to Ethereum security. Now, when you deposit your Ethereum into Coinbase staking services, you get, let's call it a receipt, but it's an ERC-20 token. It's actually called CBE. Similar to, to Lido's STETH when you use the decentralized Lido finance service, the tokenized version of the Ethereum that you've staked. Exactly. You get back your uh, your staking derivative. And uh, the problem is right now you're just holding a derivative. You can't really trade it. Now, what Eigenlayer does is it says, well, you have a derivative of Ethereum. You can stake it on uh, the Eigen Delayer service and they take care of the rest. It stakes it into its own service and it creates the security guarantees it needs. It provides those services to any L2 that will plug into it. And so the thing that is exciting about it is that stakers on layer one do not need to decide to stay on layer one or to move to layer two. All they need to do is to supply their staked tokens to the Eigen data layer, and the Eigen data layer takes care of the rest of that. And what that does is it unifies all of this massive liquidity in Ethereum and it brings it all the way up into the layer two and it allows as many other layer two networks to connect to it and get this super fast data availability. So who, who chooses what derivatives of Ethereum can be used on Mantle? Because you've used Coinbase as an example. So does Lido's staked ST ETH go on there? Does Rockpool's R ETH go on there? Um, who decides which are uh, derivatives of Ethereum get to be used? I don't think Eigenlayer has said uh, whether they're going to have their own token. So what they have right now is their service and they have a list of tokens that are currently accepted. Uh, one of them is uh, Lido's and another one is uh, Coinbase's. And I'm sure that list could probably expand, probably determined by the size and the reputation of the staking service on the layer one. Yeah, fair enough. So I, I've been on the Mantle Discord and I've been asked some questions there. And, and one question I couldn't quite get answered is what kind of applications can be built on Mantle that can't be built on Arbitrum and Optimism? Um, I want to know what, th what this layer can do that the others just simply cannot. So here's the thing. Mantle does exactly what Optimism does, but the unique thing it offers is one, extra speed because of the data layer, and two, extra security 
because of the combined liquidity brought up from the layer one Ethereum onto the layer two. So we're talking extra speed, extra security. Now you can run any app you want on any blockchain you want, but then what you really want is speed and security. So as soon as you open those two avenues up, speed, games, low gas fees, NFTs, social networks again that are fast and secure, and more interestingly is that you can actually start to move decentralized exchanges from uh, layer ones to layer twos. It's for a decentralized exchange to move to a layer two, they really have to think about the security. And if a layer two has, let's say, just $500,000 worth of staked uh, security in the network, and then you have a DEX come in with billions of dollars being traded daily, it creates a massive honeypot for anybody who has enough money to add their notes to that layer two and enough stake uh, to start causing chaos and hacking on that level. You might see that's very interesting is uh, decentralized exchanges as well. That's I think that's a big one because I think everybody wants to move to these decentralized exchanges, but yes, there is liquidity issues. Yes, there's definitely speed issues and definitely fees to do that. So if Mantle is offering that security level as well, that is a pretty unique combination. Let's talk about what the investment opportunity here is and specifically around what does what does Mantle use as its gas? So definitely not investment advice, but I think BIT could be something valuable. BIT is the native token for the Mantle. But really what's key is that it's fine to have a blockchain, uh, but really what you want is a blockchain with a lot of economic activity, with a lot of apps, with a lot of DEXs in it. And so it's one thing to make it very attractive by having extra speed and extra security. But really what you want is as many incentives as you can have to get people to move. Granted, speed and security are massive. But the other interesting thing is that Mantle is funded and built by the BitDAO network. And so uh, BitDAO is a massive funder of many different projects. And so I think we can expect to see a lot of these projects uh, probably move to that layer. Uh, one, because of funding, and two, because of the obvious advantages. And I, I think the unique thing that this offers is that unlike other networks that have been built like lately, like Aptos comes to mind when it was you know heavily VC funded and they basically wanted to create their tokens, start dumping on the retail as they moved in, with this version that BitDAO has created, um, the DAO was funding it, and rather than them getting Mantle to create its own token and, and dump that, they're actually making their Bit token, the gas fee, used on mantle so they're investing in the project and then they're adding utility to their token by saying you need to use this to pay for gas fees on the network so i think that's a really interesting and unique thing to to look out for in the future if bitdow continue to fund different projects more protocols i imagine they're going to take the same tactic and rather than uh wanting to you know make a quick buck by creating something and dumping a new token on people they're going to implement their bit token as a utility aspect in whatever protocol and whatever network's being built. So that's therefore adding more value to that bit token. Oh yeah, 100%. And it's all about utility and not only social networks, but gaming. Uh, let's let's wait and see. It's very exciting. Testnet should be launched soon. And so developers can start to play with it. All right, mate, we might leave it there. So Mantle Layer 2, very interesting project funded by BitDAO, which I think to me is even more interesting to watch them and see the more projects that they fund. Thanks for your time today, Will. Thanks, Simon. Until next time.